Will you pray with me, please? Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word, and I pray that we will hear your voice falling gently upon our ears, that we may be transformed into your likeness, both here and in your heavenly realm, through and with the love of Jesus Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, October 28th, was the feast day of St. Jude. A feast day, if you do not know, is a day that we remember and celebrate something or someone important to our faith. So Christmas is a feast day. Easter is a feast day. March 17th is St. Patrick's Day. People all over the world celebrate that one. And October 28th is the Feast of St. Jude, which is our saint that we named our church after, obviously. Why did we name our church after St. Jude? Well, before he was St. Jude, he was one of the 12 apostles of Jesus. He was also Jesus, a brother of Jesus, or cousin, if you don't happen to think that Jesus had actual brothers, but anyway, they were related. He was definitely an apostle, and you can always tell St. Jude by how he's pictured in a painting or a statue, because he always, wait a minute, here he is. <laughs> He always has a flame on top of his head to indicate that he was one of the apostles present at Pentecost and received the Holy Spirit. And he's always carrying an image of Jesus with him. And that part of the story is actually what made him a patron saint of lost and hopeless causes. You ever heard that before? St. Jude is the saint of lost and difficult and of hopeless causes. And why is an interesting story. It goes back to the time when Jesus was still alive and the king of Edessa, which is in Turkey, was dying of some incurable disease and was losing all hope and very difficult situation to be in. And before giving up all hope, he sent a letter to Jesus, who he had heard about as a healer, and asking Jesus to come and visit him and cure him of his illness. Now, Jesus did not go to Edessa, but instead sent Jude in his place, carrying a cloth that Jesus had pressed his face upon, and when Jude got to Edessa, an image of Jesus was on this cloth. And when the king saw it, he was immediately healed, and he and a whole lot of others began to believe in Jesus as the Son of God. So Jude became the patron saint of lost or difficult causes and hope for things to get better. Which brings us to St. Jude's MCC because back in 1992, it was a very difficult cause to start a church in Wilmington with a primary outreach to the LGBT community without being harassed and possibly even killed for our faith. But it worked, and we became St. Jude's. Well, now let's circle back to the actual word saint. Many of you have asked me, what is a saint? What makes a saint a saint? How do you become a saint? Is everyone a saint? Can you be a saint while you're alive, or do you have to die first? And why is there, another, why is there a feast day for all saints, November 1st, but then another one right after the November 2nd for all souls? Are they the same? And furthermore, what does that have anything to do with Halloween? 
Well, I'm going to keep this really simple this year. Saints are people who led such holy and virtuous lives that their example is something we can strive to imitate in our own lives. <coughs> Here's the tricky part, though. Some Christians also believe that because of their extreme holiness, that they're not still dead waiting for Judgment Day, but they are fully alive in Jesus Christ already having enjoyed their particular judgment because they were so holy. So you can pray to them for help, like praying to St. Jude for help when difficulty arises. And I'd say maybe about half the Christians in the world believe that, and about half do not. They're still dead. Whatever. We can still honor them with special days. Souls, those are saints. Souls, on the other hand, simply refers to anyone who has died with their Christian faith intact. And so we remember them while still praying for their souls to enjoy heavenly union with Christ once Judgment Day happens. Halloween is the day before All Saints Day, October 31st. And the name Halloween comes from the Old English hallow, meaning holy and honored. We still use that word sometimes, hallowed. And then ween. The evening of, Eve, Ween, Halloween. So it's a connection of those two words. The evening of the All Hallowed Souls Saints Day. And that makes a three-day period, Halloween, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, that we can pray for the dead and have a little bit of a good time on Halloween with it. But let's go back to saints, because that's the first one that happens. It's going to be what? Wednesday, Thursday? We've already looked at St. Jude, but I thought it might be interesting to look at some other famous saints today. You know, there's over 10,000 named saints in the church, so, you know, unless you can remember that many, it's nice to have a few favorites. Now, we already know about St. Mary and St. Joseph, Jesus' earthly parents. If you've never noticed her before, here's St. Mary. Put her in front of Jude a little bit. Here's St. Joseph. He's sleeping. Don't wake him up. He's napping. He's napping. By the way, there, that's a neat statue of St. Joseph you can, uh, they sell uh, because St. Joseph's it was during his dreams when he was asleep that the angels always came to him and told him what was going to happen. So you can put your little uh, prayer requests under, <laughs> under Joseph's little rock he's sleeping on at night and gets answered. It's great. It's like little kids where your tooth disappears in the morning. <laughs> I don't think you get money, though. Um, I bet you already know four other saints. We all do. St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the writers of the Gospels, and that fact, St. Paul the writers of all those letters in the New Testament. So now we know, what, seven or eight saints already. But who else do a lot of people know about? Well, here's a few of my favorites in no particular order. We'll start with Saints Perpetua and Felicity. Anybody ever heard of them? Good. Perpetua and Felicity were early, early Christians, and they both suffered and died for their faith back in the like second century, I think. Which, oh, by the way, if you die for your faith, if you're a martyr for your faith, you automatically become a saint, and you go straight to heaven. <laughs> I thought I'd mention that, because in the past, at least, there's been plenty of people who would like to kill me, <laughs> and I simply ask, do it on a Sunday. <laughs> so Perpetua and Felicity, they maintained their faith even after they were arrested and tortured. They were thrown to wild animals to be torn apart and eat, eaten. And right up to the end, they spoke words of Jesus Christ, which amazed people and, and caused many of them to convert to Christianity. 
which if you remember at that time was a very dangerous thing to do under the Roman emperors. Then there's St. Augustine. St. Augustine? Okay. Famous in church writings, wrote a lot of doctrines of the church and stuff. He had big hang-ups about sex, by the way. But he still wrote a lot of doctrines that we still use today in the church. And that, that is not the reason I like him. <laughs> I like him because he's an example of overcoming youthful indiscretions. He was a wild guy. <laughs> and scandalous behaviors to become holy and virtuous and all of those good things. Not necessarily how I would describe myself, but I've heard it said of me. Someone closer to the top of my list, a very popular saint, Saint Anthony. How many people have heard of Saint Anthony? Much, many more hands. You might know him as the saint who helps find things, the, the saint of lost and found. Lose your keys, pray to St. Anthony. Lose your marbles, pray to St. Anthony. And you can always tell who St. Anthony is, I don't have a statue of him, because he's young and he holds the child Jesus in his arms. The story on that one, I love the stories, the story on that one goes that a student of St. Anthony lost his Psalter one day, his book of Psalms one day, you know, and books were very scarce back then, very valuable. So this kid was, you know, very upset. So St. Anthony prayed and prayed in God, to God that he would find his book. And lo and behold, he did pray to St. Anthony to find things that were lost. The part about holding the child Jesus comes from a story that Anthony was in his cell, you know, little room in the monastery, I guess, you know, praying and another person walked by and saw a really bright light coming out from under the door and thinking that, you know, Anthony's room must be on fire. He burst in and sure enough, there was St. Anthony in deep, deep prayer holding a child Jesus radiating all of this light. So the lesson is pray to be humble and like Jesus in all aspects of your life. Don't lose your keys. Another saint I like is Saint Catherine of Siena. She lived in the 1300s and was known for her holiness and spiritual visions that attracted a lot of people to her. And she wrote a lot about a mystical union with Christ and how we can all enjoy this special, special spiritual bond with Jesus that can not only influence our faith, but, you know, burn bright in heart and our souls every single day. Now, her writings could be a little, you know, risque for our modern ears about this marriage with Jesus. But I think we've actually become more prudish over the years than less. The thing to remember there is this uniting of our bodies with this spirit of Jesus that is just bound together every day, every moment of our lives. And we have St. Catherine, or, or St. Catherine, she was also a friend of St. Francis, who was also one of my favorite saints. I think most of us know St. Francis of Assisi, particularly his connection to animals. His story is that he came from a very rich family and lived this very indulgent life when he was young, all doing all sorts of things. He had all the money in the world, but then he felt empty by all of this and gave it all up to become an itinerant preacher. He traveled around the countryside helping the poor. But he was still a little bit disillusioned in life. So he prayed and prayed and prayed to God for spiritual enlightenment. And Jesus appeared to him and asked him, he said, help repair my church, which has fallen into ruin. Now, at first, Francis thought he meant the church he was praying in, a church in Italy somewhere. Actually, it's in Assisi. But then he became aware that Jesus was really asking him to repair the whole church. 
church, the worldwide church that was falling down all over the places in belief and faith and worship. So St. Francis set out to do that. In fact, he was so good about preaching the love of Jesus for all people and all things that even the animals would listen to him. Next, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about St. Christopher, which a lot of children know, right? St. Christopher. We're getting, some people are given medals of St. Christopher for the way he helped children, carrying them places. But unfortunately, poor Christopher, he's no longer a saint. He has been demoted. <laughs> Why people do that, I really don't know. It's kind of like when they demoted Pluto from being a planet. You know, just leave it alone for crying out loud. But anyway, poor St. Christopher, now he's just, uh, he's just Christopher. Someone who, all, who is still a saint is St. Teresa of Avila. Now she helped reform the whole, uh, the Carmelite nuns, which was this big nun thing in the, middle, in the middle centuries. And it said about her, one of the miracles she performed, was that she brought her nephew back to life after a building fell on him. She also influenced popes and kings and queens. She was quite famous. And she did this all the while while she, she suffered greatly in life from poor health. And in her writings that influenced most people, including me, we, that's what we remember her for, because she wrote things about the soul's attachment to God and uh, if you've ever heard of her, it's a bestseller called The Interior Castle that explains how to go through these, these different rooms in the castle to finally get to the center where God is and represents our life and faith going forward. Uh, read that sometime. It doesn't take too long. And then someone else who suffered from ill health and died very young, another saint, is St. Therese of Lisieux. She's a very, very popular Catholic saint due to her extreme devotion to Christ despite all her illnesses and suffering in life. And she has a name, Little Flower, she's called because of her statue and beauty of, of her faith, Little Flower. Finally, one of my favorite recent saints is Saint Guido Schaefer. Brazilian seminarian, and he died when he was only 34 years old in 2009. In addition to studying to become a priest, he was a doctor who helped and gave free treatment to the poor in those horrible slums around Rio de Janeiro. Although, you know, he's not quite a saint yet. It usually takes a long time. There's like three or four stages you got to go to. But he is a venerable. That's the first thing you get to be called. A venerable, so and so, venerable Guido. It is his devotion to the poor and dying that is why, you know, when you become a saint, first your local like bishop or somebody puts you forward to be a saint. Says, I don't, I don't disagree. He should be a saint. And you're called venerable. Then you become a blessed, I think it's blessed next, right? Then you become a blessed, um, you know, they attribute like one miracle to you. Somebody came back to life or got healed real quick, who knows? But, uh, you know, something happened and you become a blessed. And then you go all the way up to the Pope and the Pope actually assigns a devil's advocate, which is where that term comes from, to go out and find a reason this person should not become a saint. And if he can't find a reason and a second miracle is attributed to this blessed person, they become a saint. So Guido probably has a way to go. If you want to look him up, if you want to Google him, you can search for surfer angel, because he was also a surfer. And he's the surfer angel, angel of Brazil. Lots of good pictures there, by the way, of surfer angel Guido. So saints are people. 
we can look up to and even try to emulate and be like for the way they live their lives. You know, there's a saying that uh, I think some of us probably have heard that I think sums up sainthood, and that is, be the things you loved the most about the people who are gone. Be the things you loved the most about the people who are gone. Which brings us to the final saint I want to mention today. And that is our own saint. The first saint ever named by the congregation of St. Jude's as a saint. And that is... Bob Jenkins in his yellow suit, also known as Bobby Stanley Jenkins, and not just at St. Jude's, but all around Wilmington and beyond. And, you know, he was, if, if you remember, if you didn't know him, you, you missed something great. And he was one of Wilmington's premier historians. He was born up in Sneeds Ferry and you know, God knows how long ago, and you know, could tell you the history of, of everything. He could tell you the history of every stone that lined the streets down in Wilmington. If you took one of his tours, it was like, you know, 19 hours long, it seemed. You know, he would burst into stores and restaurants that weren't even open and show you the, the longleaf pine wood that made it and, you know, the stones in some of the alleys, you know, round ones. He'd say, well, that was one of the ballast stones from, you know, some ship 100 years ago that came to Wilmington. And he was just a great guy. He knew everything. Matter of fact, they named the uh, visitor center down there at the end of Market Street. It's, it's now the Bob, Bob Jenkins Visitor Center. But he was also devout in his faith and brought many people to faith in Jesus. He helped start the Church of St. Jude's. He bought the first building downtown, that where the first St. Jude's was, down on Castle Street, the first permanent home of St. Jude's. You know, he did so much for this community and so much for this church that we honored him in 2021 as our first saint. Now, in doing so, we opened ourselves up to some ridicule by some religious highbrows. But since we've been doing that from the beginning, we didn't really care. <clears throat> Opening doors for people who have been shut out. We wanted Bob Jenkins to be a saint, so so be it. He is our saint. Because he was truly someone, along with all the other saints, who lived a life of truth and substance and excellence and humility and a joy for life and a, a real comforter to those who mourn. You know, when Jesus spoke of the blessed who will inherit the kingdom of heaven, you know, he was talking about people like Bob Jenkins. So don't forget to pray this week for the saints of old and new and the souls of all of those who have gone before us. We're given these three days each year to be intentional about this. So let me be the first to bid you a happy Halloween and a holy All Saints and All Souls Days. I forgot something. So before we pray, there's, uh, let's see, here's a picture of St. John of the Cross. So if you don't know him, you've probably certainly heard about his writing, The Dark Night of the Soul. And down here is St. Michael statue, you know, one of the archangels, you know, who's going to defeat Satan at, uh, you know, during Revelation and the end times, but he's also the protector of departed souls. So that's why he's there, and that's why we lit a bunch of candles there today. So will you pray with me, please? <clears throat> Holy God, we yearn to be counted in the great company of saints. So allow our hearts to be open to the rush of your Holy Spirit, that we may truly know what it is to live in Christ. And as followers of Christ, 
we find the confidence to speak our prayers to you. Lord, we pray this day for a nation divided and a world at war with itself. With hate overcoming love, with violence overcoming peace, may you ground us in your love that we may be able to respond in gentle and compassionate ways. Throughout the ages, you have endowed your saints with holiness so that we may see what a redemptive life looks like. Into the cracks of our lives, send your spirit that we may be counted among the holy here on earth. And God, above all, we pray that our lives be lived for those who need you the most. May we do for the least of these as we would have done for ourselves. Our hearts are full of those we offer the prayers of our hearts to you. And we ask this one thing for ourselves, that we may become channels of your peace, a holy people, a holy nation, a holy church of saints and hallowed souls. And it is in that most holy name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I want, wanted to mention that today we remember especially uh, Gary Hinson, uh, who died last week. So let us take a moment and remember and let God fill our souls today. 